Oh, hey guys, I'm Hunter. This is the greatest 10 albums ever created. If you don't agree with me, this is because you're a fucking idiot. Let's get started, shall we? Too many people on YouTube say, these are alphabetical because I can't know there's a top 10. No, fuck it. These are the albums that I give a shit about most in this order. Number 10, Mr. Bungle's 1999 album, California. Here, just listen to this for a sec. What is happening? This album is literal fucking madness. P Pitchfork Magazine uh, wrote a review of the album and, uh, and they said, the more I listen to California, the more I'm convinced that Mike Patton is really the devil on holiday. Listen to this album and you'll agree. Choice track, Retro Vertigo. It's slow, but it's dope. Number nine, Lights Out, the 2012 album by Graveyard, a Swedish rock band. No doubt you've probably never heard of this band. It was shown to me by a guy who was shown to him by a guy who was shown to him by a guy. At first listen, you'll probably hate it because of the lo-fi quality, but guess what? This band doesn't give a fuck about you or your preference in production quality. <sighs> These guys are insane. They're missing teeth. They play at every festival you've ever heard of, and you need to check them out. My choice track is The Suits, The Law, and The Uniforms. Okay, now number eight is the 2003 release by Radiohead, Hail to the Thief. This album is dope. It was before they got all pretentious and trench coaty and weird and electronic. It just, it, it, it sounds like peanut butter with a real lot of butter in it. I don't know what to say. It's Radiohead. My choice track is a punch, a punch drunk, a drunken, what is it? A, uh, a punch up at a wedding. It's Radiohead. You know what it is. It's good. Okay, now number seven is the earliest one I have on my list. It's from 1959. It's Dave Brubeck Quartet, Time Out. Now, if you think you've never heard this album, you're an idiot. It's everywhere. It was in Wedding Crashers during the, the touch football scene. Blue Rondo Alaturk. When Bart Simpson started playing drums in that jazz band, take five. You have heard this album. Don't worry about it. Choice track, Strange Metal Lark. It's good. Smooth. Okay, now number six is Revolver and Rubber Soul by The Beatles, 1966-1965. Now, I know you're saying, yes, I'm gonna call the same f***ing album because, oh, Hunter, there's the little delicacies between, no, it's the same album. And I guarantee if you're a Beatles lover, you've got them confused more than once. They came up eight months from each other. I don't even know, I'm just this was when the Beatles stopped having ear sex with 15 year old girls when they started doing drugs and making actually good tunes. It's the Beatles, man. It's the Beatles at their best. Choice track, Run For Your Life. It's so ridiculously sexist. I love it. Number five, You're a Woman, I'm a Machine, Death From Above 1979, and it was released in 2004. 99% of people that I try to show this album to absolutely hate it, because it just sounds like a donkey having sex with a bag of sand. What? The, these, are, these are lyrics from their song. It's about pulling out. And you, how can you? It's great. Choice track would have to be Go Home, Get Down. This one right here. So good. The number four, Octahedron, the Mars Volta 2009. If you ever wanted to get into the Mars Volta, this would be a good place to start. It's so good. The thing, they actually make like mad screamo alt prog punk into pop tunes. And I don't know how they do it. A choice track, mm, Halo of the Nembutals. I think that's how it's called. Halo of the Nembutals. Number three, Demon Days by The Gorillas, 2005. This was produced by the then unknown Danger Mouse, who obviously went on to do a bunch of shit. This album was actually uh, intended to accompany a Gorillaz movie that they were working on, but that got scrapped. But a lot of the themes, they talk a lot about greed and, and ego, uh, still carry on, and those were supposed to be some of the themes from the movie. But it still went on as being a great album. Choice track, Every Planet We Reach is Dead. Number two, we're getting close. Houses of the Holy, Led Zeppelin, 1973. This album is perfection. I swear, this is like the the climax of sound quality just ever. This album was just like the perfect point of their career. Choice track would probably be a split between No Quarter and The Crunch. Take it to the bridge. Was a confounded bridge. <laughs> Number one, We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank, Modest Mouse, 2007. Holy shit, if you've never listened to Modest Mouse, I don't even know what to tell you. You probably won't like it. <laughs> Honestly, I hated Modest Mouse for a long time before I started listening to this album. It was around my second tab of acid, where Isaac Brock just mutated into the 65 meter god with a lisp, and then I crumbled to my knees. So my choice track would have to be Parting of the Century. It's a ridiculous journey about this carbon molecule. Not really, but that's what I take away from it. Check out some of these lyrics at the end of the song. Someday something will die. Your 
Whip out your bongs, kids. That shit got trippy real quick. All right, guys, so that's my top 10 list. I just wanted to thank you. So <laughs> You think I just ended it there? My number one album, I don't even want to put on this list. It's zero. It's my zero life. It's my last chance in there. Blah. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's Bonnie Vare's 2008 release, For Emma, Forever Ago. I can't even talk about this album. Just drink a glass of wine and cry. My choice track would have to be The Wolves, Act 1 and 2. And they're beautiful. Just like you. Thanks for watching, and uh, let me know if you disagreed with me. Because if you didn't disagree with me, then you're a fucking liar. <laughs> 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 <laughs>